The number of flesh-eating bacteria cases here in the United States is rising at an alarmingly fast rate. In fact, the CDC just released a statement a couple of months ago warning the public about a certain bacteria that is well known to cause this flesh-eating nasty disease. This bacteria is known as Vibrio vulnificus. Most cases of Vibrio vulnificus occur in warm and salty waters where these bacteria tend to live. Here in the United States, we've actually seen five deaths within the last couple of months from Vibrio vulnificus in the states of Connecticut, New York and North Carolina. This is why states bordering the Gulf of Mexico tend to have the highest number of case reports of this flesh eating bacteria. So I wanna give a shout out to you. Be careful next time you're swimming in one of the beaches on the west coast of Florida. So why is Vibrio vulnificus even important to talk about? Well, of about the 200 or so cases that are reported each year, approximately one in five people end up dying once they get this bacteria. This bacteria can cause a slew of different problems, but it primarily does so in one of two ways either from the inside of your body out or from the outside of your body and then works its way in. So talking about the inside out first, someone becomes sick after getting these little critters inside their stomach from eating contaminated seafood. In particular, raw oysters tend to be a harbinger of these nasty little bacteria because these oysters contain a large amount of these bacteria based on the food or other things that they eat in the ocean. Because there's a lot of bacteria in the oysters, there's obviously a lot of bacteria that gets into your stomach, and the more bacteria there are at the start, the higher percentage that you have of having worsening infection. So starting from the inside out, an individual may begin with something called gastroenteritis. And I love breaking down medical terms because I really think it helps you understand where we derive and get the fancy medical terms from, especially if you don't have a strong medical background. Gastroenter just means with inside the stomach, and itis, whenever you see itis on the end of a word, that means inflammation. So putting this word together, we have inflammation of the stomach. This stomach inflammation can lead to similar signs and symptoms of what we know of for food poisoning, which can be abdominal pain, vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, etc. Once the infection spreads from the stomach throughout the rest of the body, it can lead to organ failure and eventually death. In particular, Vibrio vulnificus is very harmful for individuals with chronic underlying liver conditions, such as fatty liver disease or chronic hepatitis. Now I mentioned that these critters can get inside you from the outside in, and this frequently happens if you're swimming in the ocean and you have some sort of break in your skin that allows these bugs to come in. This can be something as innocuous as a recent tattoo, a recent piercing, or even a small cut in your skin that you sometimes may not even notice. These bacteria can then make their way in through the wound and start spreading into the skin as well as the fascia, leading to something called necrotizing fasciitis, which is the fancy medical term for that classic flesh-eating bacteria look that we are all quite familiar with. Again, breaking this medical term down, necrotizing means dying or rotting, and fasciitis is inflammation of the fascial layer, which is the layer in between the skin and the muscle of your body. So putting it together, you have rotting or breakdown of that fascial layer. Once the bacteria make their way in through the wound and into the skin, they start eating away at the skin, the fascia, the blood vessels, the muscles, and they cause necrosis or death and breakdown of all the cells in that area. This can go from a certain localized part in the body and travel systemically throughout the body, leading to sepsis, which is a fancy medical term for bacteria throughout the blood, eventually leading to septic shock, where you have a widespread infection of the bacteria, which causes persistently low blood pressure. And then again, this can lead 
to tissue hypoperfusion because these tissues and organs are not getting enough blood supply and oxygen and eventually lead to death. However, even if you do survive the necrotizing fasciitis at its initial stage, it might cause so much damage that you may even have to have a limb amputation. This is why it's really important to recognize the signs and symptoms, and it's what makes necrotizing fasciitis a medical emergency. Once you recognize these symptoms, you must go to the emergency department and get admitted to the hospital in order to get strong IV antibiotics immediately in order to reduce the probability of the infection getting worse. So some recommendations in order to try to avoid this nasty flesh-eating bacteria, the only thing that you can really do in order to totally prevent the infection is to avoid the bacteria at all times, which obviously isn't quite feasible. The first line of defense with any infection is always to wash your hands frequently using warm soap and water for at least 30 seconds. If you plan on going to a vacation spot where there is a beach or ocean water that is warm, salty water, I recommend that you shower immediately after getting out of the ocean before going and doing other activities. In terms of seafood, make sure that the seafood is cooked thoroughly. I know there's individuals that love their raw oysters, and if you are going to be daring enough to eat the raw oysters, I do recommend that you find out where the raw oysters come from, because if they do come from areas that are in those warm, salty places where the bacteria are highly prevalent, you're just, uh, you're just taking chances, that's all I can say. Finally, if you do go into that ocean water, make sure that you don't have any newly placed tattoos on your body or piercings or cuts, abrasions, things like that, because that definitely increases the risk of getting Vibrio. Also, if you do happen to step on something or cut yourself with a rock in the ocean, please exit the water immediately and wash out the cut with warm water and soap. I hope you all found this video helpful. Stay safe on your next vacation. And as always, guys, I will see you all on the next one.